Hey, Mark. So I wanted to just uh, do a quick update with you. The courts, kind of open, kind of closed. Give me your thoughts on this, man. Yeah, so um, the Supreme Court order is kind of expired with regard to you know how, how courts can actually operate and, and things of that nature when it comes to you know closures. So we're seeing on a county by county basis, you know, some slow reopening. So we're at least Marion County specific, we're not seeing any in-person hearings. Everything's pretty much gonna be virtual for people that are out of custody at least until at least June 15th. They are doing some in-person hearings but those are mainly essential. So people that are, you know, you got to think people that are in jail, people that, you know, are, have the ability to get out of jail. So bond reviews or, um, you know, things of that nature, maybe a, maybe a guilty plea and sentencing where the defendant gets out of jail. They'll, they'll probably do that in person. And then some other counties, Hendricks County, Hamilton County, to a certain degree, Boone County, they're all doing some in-person hearings as is Johnson County. So real quickly, today is May 20th. Yeah. 2020, Johnson County, what kind of hearings are they doing? John, Johnson County is doing, you know, I, I, we've had, depending on which court, you know, we've had attorneys in our office, Attorney Bailey's already been to Johnson County a couple of times during, um, you know, during the shutdown and, and whatnot for pretrial conferences and check-ins just to make sure everything's moving along. A lot of these courts are doing what's called attorneys only to try and limit the amount of people that are in court. Ultimately what they're trying to do is just make sure the attorneys are still working on the cases. Um, and, and, and that things aren't just being completely shut down, you know, because the, the entire state has been. So Boone County, are they doing hearings in the courthouse, doing virtual, a little bit of both? Give me your thoughts. Boone County. I'm going to do a pop from, quiz, Matt. I'm going to do a pop quiz. It's yeah, Boone, Boone, County. County's, Boone County's doing essential hearings in person. Again, Attorney Bailey's been out to Boone County a couple of times for guilty pleas. They've been um, pretty strict about who can get in and who can get out, though. They've had a testing center out front. Um, you know, basically making sure you don't have a fever, you don't appear to be sick, and um, they're taking your temperature, I believe, and um, before you even wristbands. go in. They're giving out wristbands, yep. too, like the day of the week. Um, yep. the, the bottom line, every court is basically doing some different stuff. Am I right about that? You're 100% you're correct. You're 100% correct. And so, you know, this isn't a situation where every court is doing exactly the same. We're constantly reaching out to court staffs and, you know, you, Attorney Benitez, Attorney Bailey, myself, the court staffs just have gone out of their way to make sure that we know what's going on and our clients are taken care of. We're getting emails, you know, and they're working so hard. We're getting emails throughout the day. In some instances, um, court staffs emailing us late into the evening because they got to get home, take care of their families too. Yeah. And, uh, everyone's dealing with the same stuff right now. I've been so impressed just how together everyone has worked so hard. And it's just been amazing. So Matt, we we'll talked a little bit about Boone Johnson. Give us a, a quick rundown, the tweet version of what Hendricks County is doing. Each court's a little bit different. Now, in mo Court 5, for example, is doing everything telephonic for the most part when it comes to private attorneys with people out of custody. Other courts are doing in-person, but only if the case can be resolved and has everything filed at, you know, well ahead of time. So policies, procedures are changing daily, which is, you know, a, which is kind of building off what you said with regards to court staff. I mean, it's just been absolutely phenomenal how hard they've been working and, and communicating. I mean, Hendricks County, Hendricks County is a perfect example. I got an email from court staff, eight o'clock at night. That it really is all hands on deck and it, and, and it definitely helps that we have great relationships, you know, with everybody too. So give us the tweet version of what's going on with Hamilton County. Hamilton County is trying to do as much as they can virtually. So um, they're, they're using Microsoft Teams to try and do some hearings. If there's something, you know, for example, like a trial or something that needs um, witnesses or somebody to come in, they're, they're still moving those hearings on their own motion. They wanna just make sure that everybody's as safe as, as, as possible. Initial hearings are being scheduled in June. So, you know, even though we're starting to open up, it's definitely a slow rollout. And what about Marion County? Yeah, so Marion County is pretty much doing everything um, attorneys only and virtual. So, for example, you know, we, we used to have a bunch of hearings set on one day. Now they're just doing everything um, virtually through Zoom and WebEx um, to where, you know, it's just the attorneys, the judge and court staff, just making sure that everything is, is moving along and, and, and things aren't being forgotten. So ultimately, they want to make sure that the attorneys are moving cases and 
to be honest, you know, one of the one of the big changes coming out of this is, you know, we're gonna, I think we're going to see the end of, you know, for lack of a better term, what, what attorneys call cattle call dockets, where, you know, courts will set 40, 50, 60 hearings at the same time. I don't think we're going to be seeing that anymore. I think, you know, with, with the with the new the new age with virtual, you know, I think we're going to start seeing less pretrial conferences and, and, and cases moving a little bit quicker. So a lot of things being done virtually right now. Um, in custody people and people that can get out of custody, especially Marion County, those are still in person. And even still with some of the sentencing hearings that are open, for example, if you're looking at a lot of time in Department of Corrections, they're still doing those live too. You know, the courthouse truly is people from all walks of life will come together in a very small area. And, you know, I was a prosecutor. Um, I've been in court you know, every day, you know, for the first 12 years of my practice, and you just see people come looking terrible, feeling terrible, coughing, sneezing. I've gone to court sick in the past, um, you know, and it's such a tight environment. And, you know, I really, truly don't believe they're being overcautious. I really, truly believe that, you know, every prosecutor, judge, public defender I've ever met has gotten sick. They've been to court someone's sneezing two feet away, you get sick the next week, the next day. And so, you know, it's truly, you know, it's not like you're eating outside, the fresh air is blowing on you. It's, you really are in tight quarters. And, you know, the city county building, uh, even had, a lot of these courthouses, particularly city county building, they're a little bit older. You can just know the ventilation system is not what it would be. You know, you look at Hamilton County, they got that nice newer courthouse, the justice. Yeah. You know, you bet it's a little bit different there, but, you know, it's the same pro same problem. You know, you hear about these jails having these breakouts. You know, the jail is <laughs> pretty much, you know, those are the same people we're seeing in court. So, you know, I don't blame these courts at all for trying to do as much as possible to keep people out of the courthouse. That's not saying they're limiting justice, but trying to prevent, you know, spread of germs. Now, Matt, you made a, a comment, and I wrote this down. Right now, it looks like there are three virtual programs that courts are using yeah zoom webex and teams what is the are, are, all three of them basically allow audio visual communication correct 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 yeah what is the big difference between the zoom webex teams give us a little rundown on those three well i mean they're they're all they're all essentially built on the same platform so i mean really it's just one of those what do you prefer more what do you prefer less uh, you know, Zoom kind of came out and it hit the ground running really quick and, and, and kind of people took to that. And then they had the whole scandal with people Zoom bombing and getting into Zoom meetings and things of that nature. And, you know, with court proceedings, a lot of times some of the stuff's confidential, even though courts are supposed to be open. There are some meetings that are supposed to be confidential. For example, if I'm talking to a client or you're talking to a client over Zoom. That's covered by attorney-client privilege. If someone jumps in on that and you don't know about it, that privilege goes away. So. Um, you know, you see some people kind of going to, to WebEx on a Cisco platform. A lot of people, will, a lot of people are very familiar with Cisco and, and, and they're one of the leaders in telecommunications. So a lot of people are kind of going towards the, you know, the WebEx when it comes to court hearings and things of that nature. But, and, and, and Teams, you know, I, I haven't used Teams very often. I may have used it once. And I mean, it, it, it's all pretty much the same. They all pretty much have the same functions, features, and and, and, and get you what you need. It's just, I think, user preference, so. Um, Seems like when this kind of hit, I feel like Zoom, for whatever reason, they made this a little bit more user friendly. And, you know, it really just took off. I mean, I've used Zoom maybe about a handful of times in the past two years. And then um, since this all happened, I mean, I've been in Zoom every day, whether yeah. it's legal conference across the country, whether it's talking with attorneys, talking with staff, talking with court staff, talking with judges, we've done a few virtual consults, but we've been doing telephone consults for the longest time. But yeah, and so my understanding is WebEx has been around the longest, followed pretty closely with Teams. And, you know, I got people saying Teams are just amazing, but I just love Zoom. I mean, maybe because what I'm using the most, it just seems like really easy to work with. And um, I've, I've taken a little poll between all the attorneys in here we've all done between all four of us, we've used every single platform between the zoom WebEx and teams. And 
Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone's a clear winner. I know Marion seeming to like WebEx. Hamilton County seems to like uh, Teams. Teams. And other counties are doing Zoom. So uh, there's no kind of universal approach on that. And that's one more thing I want to talk to you about. The Indiana Supreme Court has actually released a order. And this was actually May 13th. So this is last week. But basically saying, you know, they're saying the courts are free to use audio visual communication to conduct proceedings whenever possible to ensure all matters proceed expeditiously and fairly under the circumstances. And they're even saying in felony cases, you can do guilty pleas, all proceedings, including felony cases, guilty plea sentencing with defendant waives right to be present, um, any kind of witness testimony with defendant waives the right of cross examination. Now the trial rules have always allowed for telephonic proceedings, but there were some other rules where Guilty pleas really weren't allowed. And if they were allowed, it was kind of like a little gray area. And then if they were allowed and you're in that gray area, it was kind of like you probably shouldn't do felonies. The Indiana Supreme Court has said, hey, you know, safety first. And as long as the defendant is not prejudiced, let's take care of business. And right. from, from, you know, from attorney on the street perspective, Matt, how hard has that been to coordinate virtual hearings when a client is not right next to you. Tell us about that process. Yeah, so generally what will happen is, you know, it, it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, if you, get the, if you get the link and you get all the instructions early on, it's pretty smooth because you, you can reach out to the client, get them the information, make sure everything's working. I've had instances where I've got, you know, even, even though it's attorneys only, I've got, you know, the invite or the link, you know, hours before the hearing. And it's just kind of, you know, trying to scatter. But the biggest issue that we've had, or at least that I've had with, with, with trying to coordinate it is, you know, Zoom, Teams, WebEx, whatever, whatever the platform is, it takes up a little bit of bandwidth. And you have to have the, you know, the, the capability of, you know, being able to support that. This isn't something that you can just be driving down the road on your cell phone, you know, in a, in a two-bar service that's going to work. I mean, you have to have some, some pretty high-powered stuff. So you know, you got to make sure that it's working there. And, you know, when it comes to guilty pleas or it comes to something where you have to have that, it becomes a little bit, you know, even more important. And, you know, I, I, I'm the one that purchased the internet package for this law firm. I'm the one that pays the bill every month. You know, when I purchased this internet for the office, I purposely did not go out of my way to get like top of the line because number one, we didn't do video every day. We weren't doing games. We were doing um, research on the internet we are saving online to a, a, a encrypted drive. And, you know, but I never in my wildest dreams thought that, you know, I would have to have, my internet would have to support three attorneys having four virtual conferences and then plus possibly the clients down the road. I mean, it's just, it's small changes. And I uh, you know stuff that we weren't expecting, but you know, it's, they're trying. Uh, you know, one of the big things that I'm concerned about is I'm a little bit nervous when things do start picking back up as judges trying to really encourage uh, Zoom trials, Zoom jury selection. You know, right off the bat, the Indiana Supreme Court order says, hey, nothing about this remote proceedings order can infringe on constitutional rights. You know, number four, all proceedings must be consistent with the party's constitutional rights. But then right off the bat, they say right there, when trials can resume, parties can agree to use audiovisual communications to select the jury. Um, it says they have to agree. Then another section says any party not in agreement to the manner of the remote proceedings must object to the onset of the proceedings on the record, and the court must make findings of good cause to conduct the proceedings remotely. It's, you know, I see this order and I see you know a lot of good from it, but I also see a little. It makes me nervous for my clients. Yeah. And um, you know. You and I have done self-defense jury trials, two of them this past year. And how can you communicate self-defense if you can't see the jury, talk to them, make eye contact? How um, This definitely causes me a little bit of pause. And um, Well, it's not only that. I mean, you know, when it would, not being able to see or talk when it comes to witnesses and, and trials and things like that. I mean, body language is, is huge. I mean, you and I know this, you know, from the trials we do. 
you know, body language is body language almost speaks more volume than somebody just talking. So, I mean, not being able to read that. I mean, I think there was a case in Texas not too long, you know, a, a week ago, they were trying to do a trial. Now, obviously, this isn't a criminal jury trial or anything like that, but there was a jury trial nonetheless. In the middle of the trial, one of the jurors got up to take a phone call. So, you know, I, you, you definitely, you know, you're definitely getting a, you know, shared opinion from me, you know, when it comes to nerves from doing trials by Zoom. We are not doing too many civil trials right now, but anybody listening to this, jury trial, whether it's criminal or civil, be very careful about agreeing to do a trial audiovisually. If you go to Psychology Today, this, uh, this is the most recent month, May 2020, there's numerous articles in there, you know, when people are in the vicinity of each other, Basically, if you're by somebody, it's easier for you to put yourself in that person's shoes. It's easier to stay focused. It's easier to see the entire picture, not just hear the words. What are their body language? What are the, how are they saying the words? How are they giving the testimony? All these things matter. And I think it'd be a tragic mistake for trials to be done via audiovisual methods. You know, I know that civil courts and civil attorneys have been calling doctors with a videotape deposition for the longest time, but this is completely different. This is a, more than just an expansion of that. So it just caused me a little bit of concern. So moving on a little bit though, Matt, <coughs> you have been ridiculously busy with specialized driving privileges, man. You would think that, you know, the courts are closing, or the courts have slowed down. You would think that people's applications for driver's license would kind of go to the wayside too. What's going on with that, man? We've actually, you know, you would, th you, you would think, you know, common sense and logic would dictate, hey, you know, courts are slowing down, licenses are slowing down. It's actually the inverse of that. So, you know, with courts slowing down, you know, first and foremost, you know, I, I praise the, you know, the prosecutors, court staff, judges for trying to have the parties try and come to an agreement to see if there's a way that we could do this without a court hearing. A lot of instances, you know, you can, we can make that happen. There are some, if you've got a bad criminal history, for example, or a few DUIs in your past, they're still going to want to have a hearing just to make sure that, you know, everything's on the up and up. But for the most part, you know, the judges are, are giving, you know, defense attorneys and prosecutors the ability to try and negotiate these things, come to an agreement so we can get people driving legally. And it's interesting because, you know, we've seen it skyrocket. I mean, I've been, I've been, nonstop probably for the last few weeks, you know, with, 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 with driving folks because, you know, they have time to sit down and really kind of hammer this out, get this under control. And unfortunately, I mean, you're seeing people lose their jobs. You're seeing people, you know, being laid off and this and that. And when they, and this, we're going to get through this. I mean, this is going to end at some point. We're going to, we're going to start moving forward at, 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 you know, greater speeds and people are going to need to drive. And, um, you know, now is kind of the time to do that. And in addition to being able to drive, you know, I know you and Attorney Bailey have been pretty busy yourselves trying to get criminal records expunged and trying to kind of go off of that a little bit. So I imagine, you know, with, with you guys, you're kind of seeing that same relationship, you know, people having time. Am I right? Yeah. So, you know, I think, uh, I think a lot of people are at home. I think a lot of people are considering, you know, if their job is safe, they want to try to put themselves in the best position possible to keep their job safe. Folks that have lost jobs are trying to make themselves the best applicant possible. And expungement does offer that, you know, basically if you're able to get your misdemeanor or lower level felony expunged, it's completely gone. You know, the exception of law enforcement can find it, but you can answer on job applications, never been arrested, license application, never been arrested. It's actually illegal for someone to discriminate against you. Higher level felonies that get a little bit more complicated. You know, they're expunged, but they're still visible, but then it's still not supposed to discriminate against a person. It's more complicated, but you're seeing a, a definite interest in people wanting to just put their best foot forward with society. And the best thing about this is we're filing these in the counties and the prosecutor is getting right back to us. Hey, we don't object. Usually, you're like this. Hey, man, you got one more day. Come on, what's going on? And these prosecutors emailing you back. I mean, we're filing these. In one case, the very next day, we got no objection. And we had an expungement filed on Monday, granted on, 
I want to say a Thursday night, might have got the order on Friday, unheard of. And so, especially the courts that don't require a hearing, we're flying through these. This is an absolute game changer for everyone that gets an expungement. And, you know, if you qualify, why not? Make yourself the best possible candidate. Um, so we covered everything here, Matt. We got the what's going on with the courts. We got the audiovisual communication. We got the Supreme Court order. We got a specialized driving privileges. We got expungements. In the show notes, I'll stick some notes by the Indiana Supreme Court. They actually put like some tips on how to do a Zoom meeting. And a lot of them just make sense, but it's nice to have one little spot. I'll try to find a way to insert that somewhere. I'll also try to put the uh, order expanding remote proceedings as well. So if anyone has any questions, give us a call, 317-632-3642. Remember, always play the fifth. Play the fifth.